one ram would step down on a sapling mm -hmm. and walk to the end and hold it down on the ground and the others would come and eat the leaves off. Mm -hmm. And then when he finally left, somebody else would do it on another tree. Mm -hmm. Welcome back everyone. I'm Sarah Scully with Vermont Craft Tours and I'm here today with Linda Doan of Maple Ridge Sheep Farm. Linda, thanks so much for taking oh, the time. You're very welcome. Glad to. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Linda is uh, an amazing person and we'll get into her um, history with sheep. Um, but on a personal note, she really helped uh, Rick and I when we were starting in sheep and I would come to her for advice. Um, so oh. it's been it's been a really I'm nice <laughs> relationship, very much so. Um, so uh, Linda has a big history with Shetland sheep, and we'll get into that in more detail in a second. But I wanted to ask you, I don't really know the story of what you were doing before you got into sheep, or, <laughs> or why you got into sheep. Um, were you a fiber artist before that? No. Well, yes, and yes and no. Okay. Uh, I've been sewing and knitting since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and so this was a natural progression. But um, typical of many people in the 70s, we were urban refugees. Mm -hmm. And uh, we moved here um, finally full time in 79 and um, wanted to to back to earth and be self-sufficient mm -hmm. and that kind of thing and the natural thing uh, was um, choice was sheep because they were multi-product animal mm -hmm. you have the fiber of course right uh, and uh, meat and mm -hmm. sales of animals mm -hmm. so um, and beside that, having grown up in New York City, I was a little leery of getting something like a cow that was much bigger. Mm -hmm. I've since learned that they're a lot of fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, you've raised a few, uh, I know you've raised a few meat steers over right. the years, That's just right. kind of mixing in with your In sheep. fact, the two we had last year were absolutely the most fun animals we've had around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they were quite the characters <laughs> yeah yeah neighbors of mine have uh usually have heifers young cows um around mm -hmm. in there they're so mischievous you know they get into stuff and they like to goof off and scamper thing. around yes they do that they do that but the interesting thing was they watched the llama and copied mm. him mm -hmm. and they we actually had a customer here um looking and choosing some sheep and uh, he looked up and he said my god he's actually sh hurting those rams oh well <laughs> the cat the, the cow was that's pretty funny that was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's great um so uh so you were looking to get, you knew you wanted sheep. Right. How did you pick Shetlands? Because those were not Well, here. that was not the first sheep. Mm -hmm. um, we started with Romneys and Romney Crosses mm -hmm. because they were plentiful in the area. And that right. we, if we had any questions, we could refer to the breeder and mm -hmm. ask those dumb starter questions. Mm -hmm. And um, they were very obliging. And um, that gave us the idea that once we got into it, uh, to try to help newbies with the same kind of uh, help. Mm -hmm. um, about, uh, let's see how this started. Uh, in, we got the first sheep in 1980, and when we wrote to Tut's sister who lived in New Zealand, mm. um, she got the idea, well, if you have sheep, then you should spin. Mm -hmm. And they live not f too far from the Ashford factory. Oh, okay. Yep. So sent us a wheel kit. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, we get a wheel kit. Of course, you got to put it together, mm -hmm. and then you got to try it, and mm -hmm. that lends to a, a search for fiber. And a very nice lady who was then uh, importing fleeces, uh, she was in, located in New Jersey, as I recall, sent us some samples. And when I started spinning the Shetland, I said, oh, this is it. I've got to mm -hmm. have some. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that led on an odyssey of trying to find them mm -hmm. and soon found out there were none in the country and which followed every lead that we could possibly get uh, on how to f go about finding them and one thing led to another to uh, Colonel Daly in uh, Ontario 
who had just then imported the first Shetlands into Canada. Mm -hmm. And we worked on an arrangement with him mm -hmm. and um, then eventually got uh, the first Shetlands here in October of 86, mm -hmm. um, after they finished all of the import quarantines and other hurdles that we had to jump through uh, to get them here. Right. And that right. quarantine process and all that took several years, didn't Five it? Five years. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Quite um, an undertaking. You're very per, uh, per, <laughs> persistent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was a great exercise in patience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but that's we great. We were absolutely thrilled with them once they got here. Mm -hmm. And all the warnings about them being wild animals uh, proved untrue. Mm. And uh, they were a delight to have. They mm -hmm. were extremely friendly and um, puppy-like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'll never forget your uh, ram, Wooly Bear. He's since passed on, but um, yeah. he, he was this huge Shetland ram with an enormous rack of horns, and he would just come up and get scratched under the chin. He was, <laughs> wanted attention. Was very, he yeah. was very sweet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, an amazing fleece, too. I think my mom bought one of his fleeces one I year. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, well. really, really um, nice. In fact, the last three rams that we had were so closely knit. They were such good friends mm -hmm. that uh, if one went somewhere, the other two followed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we promoted them to potential buyers as the three musketeers. Uh -huh. And, you know, please take all of them. Right. Fortunately, a lady in New, in New Jersey did. Oh, good. And yeah. um, so they're together. And she sends us pictures every so often of the three of them in pa on the pasture and how happy they look. Right, right. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, so from your small flock, how, was, how big was that initial group? The first group that came in was 43 sheep, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, six months later, uh, we got um, 23, I believe, more, mm -hmm. and then uh, a couple of years later, another do two dozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so about, probably about 100 sheep by that point, and then breeding, breeding, breeding up, and, and they then... were very prolific. Oh, yes, yeah, the Shetlands often twin. Uh, they, they do. Yeah. Uh, um, although we haven't had triplets, uh, there are a number of people who have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know some other um, farmers in the state uh, that have had triplet mm -hmm. Shetlands pretty regularly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we opted, uh, uh, because of the experience with the other sheep we had, we opted to not uh, feed any grain mm -hmm. and uh, have them strictly uh, organic, pasture-based, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, that worked out well for us, mm -hmm. and they seemed very happy and, and uh, healthy, and mm -hmm. um, gave, uh, anybody who did opt to, to feed them some grain uh, had more of an incentive of uh, multiples mm -hmm. but um, yeah that wasn't that. highest on our uh, list right right yeah no I so many tips we could get into for the new oh, shepherd absolutely. but I think that was one of the things early on in our conversation um, that I learned from you was that it wasn't necessary to grain um, kind of heritage especially heritage breed sheep I was started That's with right. Navajo churros and I've got some Shetlands from you and they, yeah, they do absolutely fine and just on dry hay and fresh pasture. Absolutely. Um, uh, mine are trained to come to the sound of grain in a tin, just in oh, case. Oh, that's a, a great training tool, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, every once, you know, once but a month, I'll treat a little bit of a candy. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. But no, no regular grain. In diet. fact, uh, if anything, if you have weeds mm -hmm. or overgrown brushy pasture, they are in heaven. Mm hmm we have yeah. uh, we have seen a number of times where the rams particularly one ram would step down on a sapling mm -hmm. and walk to the end and hold it down on the ground and the others would come and eat leaves off mm -hmm. and then when he finally left somebody else would do it on another tree mm -hmm. and they learn from each other they yeah. learn absolutely yeah. yeah yeah that's brilliant um and so from there really uh you know, 
people would come and buy uh, breeding stock from you and, and all over the country. And now That's there's right. Shetlands everywhere. How many, do you know how many there uh, are in the, the country now? The uh, latest registrations, which we got the beginning of the year mm -hmm. to then transfer it to new buyers, mm -hmm. uh, the number was forty, oh, approximately 45,000. Wow. Uh, they are now... <laughs> this lady right here. <laughs> <laughs> they are now uh, one of the top ten breeds in the country. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they're very popular with 4-H'ers because mm -hmm. they are so manageable for the younger kids. Right. And Small size. That's and right. Not eating a lot. And yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, very easily handled and mm -hmm. trained. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's wonderful to see little kids, you know, mm -hmm. eight-year-olds. Mm -hmm. so no problem at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that from, from my experience working at the Tunbridge Fair, a lot of kids start with sheep or goats, even if they're going to go up to a larger animal eventually like they're going to want to show cows or something but they like to start them out four or five years old showing sheep yes yep and then and it's a great size animal like you said very they manageable are. yeah the um, uh, largest you we have a shetland you we ever had was uh in the upper 70s mm -hmm. uh pounds mm -hmm. and the rams uh one of them got up to 120 wow yeah uh, but most of the rams would be between 100 and 110, mm -hmm. and most of the ewes were in the 60s. Mm -hmm. oh, that's the size of less than the size of a market lamb. Right. Um, yeah. Yep. Which makes it great for older folks like us. <laughs> <laughs> or those of us who are short or don't want to get trampled by our livestock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> lots of great, lots of great things. Um, and then the other thing I really love about the breed is all the natural colors. There's almost a rainbow of there natural is. colors There's, that they uh, come in. Other than the Icelandics who have the same coloring mm -hmm. because they're from the same root stock. Right. Uh, there's no other breed with as many colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, you there's know, grays a, and into lavender. There's 11 then, recognized colors. Uh huh. And there's combinations of colors, mm -hmm. and some of the marking patterns uh, to modify the colors. Mm -hmm. So you have an almost infinite variety. Mm -hmm. um, I did some calculation on some of the, that. It comes to over a thousand different flavors. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Um, yeah, I have a Shetland fleece that I'm working on right now that's uh, sort of a cinnamon colored. So it's brown, but it's it's red. Um, mm -hmm. It's really, really pretty. Yeah, I just right. love that. And I, I've seen so many of the um, the yoked sweaters done just in natural colors. Yes. Oh, and they, um, they look colorful. And they look amazing. They do. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, we had one customer that made one in all the different shades of gray. Oh, yep. Yep. That'd be up my alley. Mm -hmm. I wear a lot of gray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, and so you do, um, tell us a little bit about the fiber crafts that you do. You have a spinning group that, that yes. meets uh, once a it, month. It's dwindling. Uh, some <laughs> have moved away and retired, moved away. Some unfortunately died. Um, but um, there's there's three stalwarts mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that get together every month, and um, there's several others that join us from time to time. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a very nice, very friendly group, mm -hmm. and uh, we welcome anybody to visit and, mm -hmm. um, whenever yep. you can. Yeah. Um, and in addition to spinning, I I uh, I saw you had knitting going at the moment. Yes, uh, I have been known to dabble with. Weaving. Uh huh. Uh, I do not consider myself an accomplished weaver, but um, I know the basics. Right. And it is fun. Uh -huh. um, but in the evening, when I want to watch some interesting TV, like the dog show, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, it's, I can do that almost mindlessly. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. Everybody's very happy with the. Uh, the the uh, sweaters or socks or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and my next project is going to be a, a blanket for our third great grandchild. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah, I haven't. I've done baby blankets. I haven't done a big, big one yet. No, not a big one. Yeah, um, probably forty-five square. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's a nice size, especially in the winter, because you can have it on your lap while you're knitting and keep yes. yourself warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, well, exactly. the baby is due in July, so I have, should ah, start okay. soon. Yeah. 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 Um, and then you do some dyeing. I saw some. Uh, we wool should. in your laundry room. <laughs> Maybe fresh out of the uh, that out of the wash. Uh, was done. 
for us by a mending mill uh, mm -hmm. a number of years ago, actually. That's a, the last of the green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, uh, usually once a year uh, in the fall when we start up the wood stove, mm -hmm. uh, I get the urge to do some dyeing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm envious of people who have a wood stove. They can cook and heat their house or dye wool and heat their house. We don't heat with wood, and so I miss out oh, on that opportunity. Yes. No, that's yeah. something but that we've enjoyed. Cool right from... And it doesn't get too hot, so you're not going to cook, you know, burn your colors or overcook your... No, that's stuff. right. Yeah, and um, uh, the combination of just household kettles and things uh, mm -hmm. work just fine for small batches. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to admit, we have used uh, wood to heat even before we moved here. Mm -hmm. That was part of our prep work and mm -hmm. um, experimentation. Right, right. And everybody in our suburban neighborhood was very happy to have us either cut down or cart off wood. Mm -hmm. Then they didn't have to worry about it. Right. So right. we didn't. We were not at a loss for a source. Uh huh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing about wood heating is it, it is renewable, and so that's right. Exactly. Um, yeah, you can always go. It doesn't get much more natural than that. No, not at all. Mm. Um, so, are you still working with the breed association regularly? Uh, as a mentor. Uh huh. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and uh, we, we follow them certainly. They were gracious, gracious enough to give us a lifetime membership. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you know, we're happy to help help out. Um, I've had several requests for interviews strictly on the breed, and um, you know, be happy uh, to uh, answer questions. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. So with any sheep, um, you usually have a, a breed association for that particular breed, and they're they're a good source of information. I'll link up the Shetland Breed Association in the show notes for this episode it's in case you're interested. N A S S A. Uh huh. Uh, North American Shetland Sheep Breeders Association. Okay. Um, good. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> or dot yeah. org, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's uh, a great group, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a. a, a quarterly newsletter that uh, has mm -hmm. different experiences and hints, uh, articles about raising the animals. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, usually once a year, there's an in-depth article about the uh, genetics of co the co color transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, which is a multi-gene uh, influencing thing, right? So it's not just one gene that influences that's right. the colors and the patterns. Yeah, it's uh, quite there's complicated. There's a number of different genes mm -hmm. that uh, cover that mm -hmm. yeah fascinating so it's an, and it's also a good um resource if you want to find a breeder in your area that's uh, right someone that could locally that you could get stock from and and be maybe be a mentor to you uh, the website is started. wonderful yeah shetonsheep.org mm -hmm. and um uh, there's referrals and mm -hmm. questions and uh, not all that right um the uh, uh Breed secretary is uh, uh, has been a breeder since around 1990. Oh wow! Yeah, she's been with yep. us with, with us for a long time mm -hmm. and um, uh, very enthusiastic and very uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. You're welcome. Glad to. Excellent. Nice to see you. <laughs> so thanks, everyone. We'll link up uh, information about Shetland Sheep in the show notes. And uh, tune in next week for another interview. And we'll see you then.